So let to see what does it give. We enter three predictors, X, drift, and noise, and we try to estimate if they contribute somehow to uh, the sum of those three, which is Y. You press enter, and you get a small column of the numbers that gives you zero for the alpha, for, for the average, and one, one, and one for three predictors. Uh, if we exclude one of them, you will get different results. In this case, the average estimation is 0 0.5 because we have no idea that some noise was added and the noise varies in average around 0 0.5 and we have about equal contribution of X and the drift. We can do other things. Let's place X instead of Y. What do you expect to get in this situation? Will there be any contribution of X in X itself? Absolutely, because it is similar. For X, it will be 1. And for the drift and the noise, there will be zero. Let's try it. As you see, exactly as expected. If you try to explain the variable drift with x, drift and noise, what do you get? You get only the contribution of drift, which is the third row. Here it is. Let's see another page of the presentation. Uh, this is a very simplified uh, illustration of how the real experiment works. Of course, we know what is our noise and what is our drift, because those variables are generated by us. And that is why it is so easy to identify the contribution of each of those predictors, because we just summed up uh, artificially generated variables and we get our data. But what if we have no idea about the noise and no idea about the drift? This is typically what happens in the real experiment. Noise is random, you cannot measure it. But it is in your data. And it is big. Can you still identify the contribution of X in your data? This is your data. This is your predictor. So you just type glm fit x comma y in brackets. That's all. And normally you get one for the alpha. This is the average of this data set, which means nothing for us. We don't care about the constant uh, mm -hmm. component. But it also gives about one for beta, uh, for, for beta, which corresponds the beta of x to the beta of x. This is the coefficient. You multiply x so that you get y plus some error. And what will be the error?
if you take the data, you take your predictor, you multiply predictor times coefficient, and you subtract this predictor multiplied times this from your data, you get just noise and the drift. And this is your error. Why the error is so important? Uh, because beta itself doesn't tell anything. It just tells you the direction of the of the contribution of this predictor, positive or negative. But you have no idea if it is significant or not. In other words, you don't know if this contribution, if this contribution happened purely by chance or most likely by chance. Or this is something that just impossible to happen by chance. Or very, very unlikely. This is the significance of your data. And this is what you need to get. Not just a big response. Because what means big? Those units are totally arbitrary. One means nothing. You need Leta, to get I'm a ratio. Sorry. I'm sorry, can you magnify what you show? Sure. Uh, please magnify yes. what you show. This is what we enter, very simple, and this is what we get. Those are betas for the, for the intercept or baseline and for the x. 1.1, we don't know if it is big or not. What we need to know is what is the amplitude of the error, the ratio between the effect of x and the error or residuals gives you real statistics like for example t-score, t-test well known to everyone. It is a ratio between the difference between two average and the error estimate. How to see the error uh, using this function? You type something like this. three variables in the square brackets equal to GLM fit and here you leave just Y and X. This is how it should look. And you press enter. And now you click, uh, you, you enter stats. This is a variable which contains a lot of different things. But we are interested to see standard error, SE. You type something, you type exactly this name 
and press enter. And this is what you get. This is the p value for the two betas, which is significant but not a lot. Alternatively, if you enter into your model everything, not just x, you enter x and drift and the noise, and you try to explain why. Here you enter. Uh, what do you enter? B, dev, and start. The names of the variable can be different. It is just what I took from the example. And you type enter. Let's see what is for betas. One, one and one. Very clear. For the signal, for the drift and for the noise. But it, let's see also standard errors generated by the function. Very, very low. You see it is uh, e to the power of 15. This, this, is, this is just tiny, which means that our explanation our model explains our data very, very well. And it is not surprising, because we explain the noise and we explain the, uh, the drift. Everything is known. In the case of fMRI, the drift and the noise are challenged differently. Volodya, we are not able to use Okay, I can stop the recording at the moment.